tradition of Eastern religions who have been practicing nonviolence and not eating animals and animal products for yeah. centuries. Okay, so Goodful is a YouTube channel with a massive following, 1.1 million subscribers at the time of this recording, right? And they recently published a video called Is It Wrong To Be Vegan? Okay? And to me, that video is practically begging for a response. And so that's exactly what I did. I made a response. So let's take it from the top, right? Let's begin. Hey, Shaheen, is it wrong to be vegan? I don't know, Ari. We're just two adults who studied liberal arts, and we smell our own farts, and we're talking about the things we have. All right, so let's find out if veganism is actually making that much of an environmental impact. Okay, that is just a terrible start, right? Is veganism making that much of an environmental impact? Who cares? Like, even if it were the case that veganism were not making any environmental impact, if, if it were the case that uh, whether you eat a non-vegan diet or a vegan diet, the environmental impact is exactly the same. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Veganism is not about the environmental impact. It is about the liberation of non-human animals from human-inflicted suffering. That's what veganism is about. To not torture and kill, or torture or kill, innocent sentient beings for temporary taste pleasure is a good enough reason to not torture or kill innocent sentient beings for temporary taste pleasure. According to Joseph Poor, air transported fruit and veggies can create more greenhouse gas emissions per kilogram than poultry. Okay, although I've said that it doesn't matter whether or not veganism has a positive environmental impact, this is just too frustrating to just let slide and I'm going to address it. So look at how specific this claim is. It, it compares one very specific kind of plants and vegetables, which is air transported plants and vegetables, to one very specific kind of animal based food, which is poultry meat, right? And also read that claim carefully again. It says that it can create more greenhouse gas emissions. So there's a possibility, right? It does not say that it does create more greenhouse gas emissions. Another interesting point to note here that is that the poultry meat that is being referred to, which is basically the corpse of a one sentient living individual, right? That sentient living individual did not carry out photosynthesis, right? That living individual was an animal, not a autotrophic plant, right? So that sentient individual had to be fed crops and the number of those crops far outnumber than the number of crops then that would need to be grown to feed human beings directly. Also, I just want to say that I know exactly where this uh, quote, where this extract is taken from. I know the study, I've read it, and I could like reference this study, I could open up and I could show you the actual material of the study, but funny enough, I don't have to because they've done that work for me. In the screenshot that they have shown us, that Goodful has shown to us, it reads, Nothing really compares to beef, lamb, pork, and dairy. These products are in a league of their own. In the level of damage they typically do to the environment, on almost every environmental issue we track. Is it not interesting to you that they chose not to highlight this part, but the other part which is like just really specific, hmm. I certainly am very skeptical. The study in Italy where they looked at omnivores, vegans, and vegetarians, and randomly two vegans in that study had the highest environmental impact. It was because these vegans were eating exclusively fruit and to ship all this fruit from far strung places across the world had a huge environmental impact. But that same study, if you look at all 153 people overall, yes, meat eaters had a bigger environmental impact. I mean, what's the point of that? Like, yes, there might be vegans who have a very high environmental impact, right? Negative environmental impact. But as explained, veganism is not about environmentalism, right? 
it is about anti-speciesism. Speciesism being the discrimination on the basis of species, arbitrarily discriminating on the basis of species. I will admit that it would be a problem that if veganism in general led to a higher environmental impact than non-veganism because in that scenario there could be an argument made that you know being vegan just causes more unnecessary suffering right to animals in the wild and that outweighs the suffering caused to the animals in these factory farms but that's simply not the case right as they have recognized in this video and props to them for not leaving that information out right vegans in general will have a lower negative environmental impact than non-vegans the UK, for example, asparagus was found to be one of the most environmentally detrimental vegetables you could eat because they're growing that asparagus in Peru and then they're shipping it to the UK. And we're back to making silly points, right? So just when I thought that maybe these were sensible people, they're making the asparagus argument quite similar to the avocado problem. You see, here's the thing, vegans, don't make up a huge proportion of the population. They don't even make up a significant proportion of the population, right? Uh, they're referencing the UK, the United Kingdom, right? As far as I can tell, on the basis of the information that is available to me, vegans make up 3% of the UK population. Let's be generous. Let's say they make up 5% of the UK population. Even in that scenario, right, vegans are not causing this demand for asparagus, right? It is simply a really bad business strategy to produce something that only 5% of the population will consume, right? Asparagus is being imported into the UK not for just vegans to eat, right? Asparagus is being flown into the UK because, well, people in the UK probably like asparagus and probably buy asparagus, right? That's why there is a supply, because there is a demand, because there's a huge demand. <laughs> if it was just vegans, this demand simply would not be enough to provide a supply. So you can't blame vegans or veganism for your asparagus problem, right? Doesn't make sense. While livestock does have an impact on carbon emissions, it is not the leading source of environmental impacts. By far, the use of fossil fuels is the leading source of such emissions. I did this video where we did an environmental footprint calculator and the vegan actually, she had the highest environmental footprint because she flew cross country a lot. If you're vegan, but then you're also flying and driving a car, it's hypocritical, right? But also we're all hypocrites. Fair enough. And I think just trying to do something is better than nothing. Okay, something most of you probably don't know about me is that I have a degree in physics. That's right. So let me tell you something about experimental procedure, right? So when we do experiments, right, and we want to check the effect that one variable has on the outcome of the experiment, we have to do something called control of variables, which is to say we have to keep every other variable the same so that we can know what the effect of one particular variable, right? Because if we don't, right, the effects of other variables will start flooding in. And that is exactly the kind of method that needs to be applied here. To say that one vegan had a very high environmental impact in a video which is titled, is it wrong to be vegan, is just, uh, quite frankly, nonsense, right? Would the results be better? Would her carbon emissions and ecological footprint be lower if she were non-vegan? No, right? If you want to check the effect that veganism has on the environment, you have to control all other variables. You have to look at two people, all right, or two groups of people or a number of people who have the same kind of transportation, uh, the same number of flights, the number of uh, the amounts of time they drive cars, right? And that will answer your question, is it wrong to be vegan? And the answer is that it's not, even if you're just looking at the environmental aspect, which is, as I've explained, not the point of veganism.
Oh, by the way, if you're enjoying this video, a sub to the channel would be just phenomenal. It really helps out a small channel like mine out. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. A 2019 report written by a group of scientists recommends a largely plant-based diet which is purported to be able to feed 10 billion people by 2050, allow small and occasional allowances for meat, dairy, and sugar. How about that? That's all I'm talking about. I'm not here preaching eat meat every day, drink milk every day, but I do say that, hey, those things are nice. No, these things are not nice, right? They are the tortured corpses and the bodily secretions of innocent beings. And they're exploiting that for what? Because it feels nice to you? That's not a good enough reason to be doing this, right? They're not nice. They are the products of torture and exploitation. It's the furthest thing from nice. The problem is meat and dairy are not being produced sustainably. You can't produce the amount of dairy and meat that people consume currently on a sustainable level. Okay, that is true, right? So currently, animal agriculture takes up 83% of global farmland, but produces only 18% of all the calories that human beings consume. So it is true that the uh, amount of animal-based food that people currently consume cannot be produced sustainably. But the more crucial point here is that no amount of animal-based food can be produced ethically, right? You cannot ethically put sentient individuals into cages so small that they cannot move, right? Or put them into any kinds of cages, right? or to exploit them against their will, right? And to kill them when they simply want to live. You cannot do that on any scale. Mainstream veganism has a history of appropriating traditional foods. A oh, hey, look, that's a samosa. That's an Indian food. And as you have probably noticed by now, I'm Indian and I'm not Indian American or British Indian or anything like that. I'm Indian. I've lived in India my entire life, right? And I just want to point out a difference that I've noticed between the Western world and India, right? People in the Western world and people in India. Note that I'm not speaking on behalf of Indians because I cannot. I cannot speak on behalf of any group unless they've elected me to speak on behalf of them. This is just my experience of living in India and comparing that to the kinds of attitudes people seem to have in the West, right? Like from this video, for example, right? So if in India, right, when people see people from other cultures eating their food or like wearing a dress from their culture, right? When people from other cultures wear a dress from our cultures, people love that. They say, oh, hey, look, that, that person is wearing a dress from our culture. They're eating a food from our culture. It's so nice. That is the general trend that I've noticed here in India. Uh, and honestly, I think that's the correct reaction to have, right? It's such a wonderful thing, the intermixing of cultures. But if you really have a problem with cultural appropriation, there is a solution to that. Don't do cultural appropriation. It is not a necessary part of veganism. You don't have to call a samosa a hot pocket. I don't care if you do, like, like why would I? But if you don't want to call it a hot pocket, don't call it a samosa, eat it. Maybe don't eat the samosa, I don't care, right? But what you do need to do is you need to get some perspective. 73 billion land animals are killed every single year every single year that breaks down to 200 million animals every single day right 200 million land animals killed every single day and you're focused on cultural appropriation i think you really need to get some perspective what matters the horrible atrocity that is happening in this scenario is the cramming of innocent sentient individuals into cages, right, into gas chambers, the separation of baby calves from their mothers, 
right? That is the moral atrocity, not cultural appropriation. And again, if you really have a problem with cultural appropriation, don't do it. Don't eat the samosa. Who cares? Foods. There's a whole tradition of Eastern religions who have been practicing nonviolence and not eating animals and animal products for yeah. centuries. But when you think of mainstream veganism, yeah. you often think of white people. There's What's the reasoning here? I think the most charitable interpretation of what, I, of what she's saying is that people from these other cultures that she is referencing, right, that they deserve credit for anti-speciesism. That seems to be the most charitable interpretation of what she is saying, and we should be charitable. How does that answer the question in the title, is it wrong to be vegan? Give those cultures the, the credit that you think they deserve, and be vegan. Also, I'm not quite sure which cultures she is referencing. But I'm Indian, I'm one of these Eastern cultures, Right, I uh, my sort of religious background is one of these Eastern religions. Right, I'm an atheist. Right, I don't have a religion, but my religious background, right, the the religion of my ancestors, is one of these Eastern religions. For example, the consumption of dairy is not prohibited in these Eastern cultures, and dairy causes a lot of animal exploitation and it's definitely not anti-speciesist, right? So I'm not sure of which cultures that she's referencing. I might be wrong, I might be just uh, ignorant of these cultures, but even if there are these cultures, maybe there's something you need to learn from them, right? Maybe learn from them that you should not exploit non-human animals if there are such cultures. What's the point of saying <laughs> that these cultures don't exploit non-human animals, so I'm going to exploit non-human animals. To be quite frank, that seems like some kind of cultural supremacy, if that's the reasoning. There's some people who say that veganism is hurting indigenous farmers because the demand for these certain foods like quinoa, now everyone wants them and all the health food stores are carrying it. Yeah. So much so that people in Peru and Bolivia, where quinoa is traditionally grown, have sometimes not even been able to afford it. This is just the asparagus argument with asparagus fished out for quinoa. I'm not going to address it again, I've already addressed it. Around 1.3 billion people depend in some way on raising animals for their livelihood today. In Iran, for example, you have traditional nomadic tribes mm -hmm. that still exist. They rely heavily on their cattle mm -hmm. for dairy and for meat, but also that is their source of livelihood. So they love and care for those animals and they don't abuse them to a point where they are not a renewable resource for them. <laughs> okay, I feel so silly saying this in every single video but there's always someone new who's watching so here we go again as you can probably tell by looking at my face i'm indian i belong to a marginalized section of india which is northeastern india northeastern india is not a homogeneous region it has like mainstream northeastern people and there are like indigenous tribes which are like marginalized within northeastern india right i am the descendant of one such tribe I know my regular viewers must be tired of me saying this in every single video, but thank you for bearing with me. Anyway, I'm not telling you these group identities because I'm saying that, oh, I'm a marginalized person, you have to listen to me. I am correct by default. No, that's not what I'm doing. I am telling you all of this because I want to disallow people the opportunity to say something like, oh, you're a privileged person, you have no idea about these struggles of indigenous people around the world. I'm just trying to disallow people from saying that, right? Anyway, with that made clear, there are three points I'd like to make about this. Number one, just because a certain tribe in some part of the world needs to rely on exploiting animals, right? Maybe it's a necessity for them. It doesn't mean that you are justified to exploit animals. Number two, animals are not resources. They are not renewable resources. As the boy in the video seems to say, 
right they are sentient individuals number three those animals right they are not their animals they are their own individuals similar to how if the west um, decided sometime in the future i'm not saying this will happen but hypothetically if the west decided that it wants to colonize the eastern world again as it did in the past and kind of enslave people in the eastern world as they did in the past i would not become your sort of third world person right i am my own individual and similarly those non-human animals too are their own individuals they are not their animals in the sense that you are describing now i know some people are doing this for ethical reasons because they don't want to harm any living being but they also have to take into consideration that in some cultures both historically and currently there is no other way to survive so i wonder if people who are vegan take into account that a lot of people who aren't vegan have been so traditionally in harmony with the earth the definition of veganism as defined by the vegan society is a lifestyle and a philosophy which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to non-human animals for amongst other things food so yes we do take that into account a simple google search the first definition of veganism would have told you that this video is really poorly researched The majority of America can afford a Big Mac more than they can afford just basic salad ingredients. If we can't address that, then I don't think there's any more to address. This gets into food justice. If you don't have the buying power to get all the products that you need to have a nutritionally sound vegan diet. Maybe being fully a vegan is not for everyone and not to preach it as something everyone should be. I've actually made a full video about this, responding to a video by the British Broadcasting Corporation or the BBC. I'll link that somewhere around here, so be sure to watch that. But what I'd just like to say here is that if veganism or plant-based food, in this case, right, is not accessible to all, the way to get past that and to ultimately reduce and minimize the amount of unnecessary animal suffering in our societies is for everyone who has access to plant-based food, to consume plant-based food, so that it becomes more mainstream, right? So that the supply increases, right? Create a demand for it so that the supply increases. And that makes it ever so slightly easier for every next person to follow through in their footsteps. Again, I'd like to draw the attention of my viewers to the title of their video, which is, is it wrong to be vegan? And just notice the point they're making that not everyone has access to plant-based food. How does that answer the question that they're asking? It does not answer it at all. The average American eats three hamburgers a week. I think that's too many hamburgers. That may be too many hamburgers. And yeah. I think veganism is a natural response to that extreme. We don't need to be eating meat in every single meal. Let's say someone just reduced by 50% their meat intake, but at the same time... Okay, before I address this, I want to like tell all of you, tell the viewers something that most people seem to be completely unaware of, which is that the British Empire, which colonized India, enslaved Indians, right? So Indians were enslaved, which is something I've noticed most people are completely unaware of. Again, I'm not saying this to say something like, you know, my ancestors were enslaved, so I am correct by definition. No, I am saying this to, again, disallow people from saying that, oh, you don't have that lived experience, um, you are privileged, how do you make that comparison? Anyway, with that cleared up, what the boy in the video is talking about is something called reducitarianism. The thing about reducitarianism is that it has always struck me as saying something like, I let my slaves run free on certain days of the week. The thing is that you don't have to own slaves at all, right? You don't have to hold them enslaved at all, right? Surely it is better to let them run free, but here's the bright idea. 
don't hold them enslaved at all. Reduced by 50% their meat intake, but at the same time changed other things. By 50% changed the amount of driving they do, and by 50% reduced the amount of flying they do. They don't theoretically fall into the bracket of veganism, but one might say that they've done more. So do those things too. Again, look at the title of the video. The title of the video is, is it wrong to be vegan? Is, <laughs> if you do those things and you're not vegan, is that better? than being vegan and doing those things? No, right? Like, no one's stopping you from doing those things. Veganism is not a solution to all of the world's problems and it doesn't have to be. The fact that we should stop contributing to the unnecessary exploitation of non-human animals is good enough. To be vegan. Maybe the better thing would be to just kind of be more chill about your veganism. And there are chill vegans. And of course there are chill vegans, but there are total douchebags out there. Just like there are total douchebags out there who are me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. Self-depreciating humor to take away from the illogical and irrational point that he just made. Here's the thing, buddy. If I was being forced into a gas chamber, right, if I was having my throat slit, right? If I was being exploited for my body parts, right? I would want you to be a total douchebag about it, right? And in telling people about the reality of what is going on. And so would you. And why is it any different for the non-human animals? They are being exploited. They are having unnecessary suffering imposed onto them. They deserve to have their suffering represented in the exact way that we would deserve our suffering to be represented. And here's the thing, if you're asking me to be chill about it, right, you're asking me to disrespect your intelligence, right? That is how we treat children, right? Or don't tell the child that they'll get upset. I am not going to treat you like a child. I will tell you how it really is because I respect you too much as a person to respect your ridiculous delusions. Anyway, that's been it for this video. I've been Aditya Prakash or Soy Theist, and I'd like to thank you for watching and especially to my patrons on Patreon, who by the way, had early access to this video. If you'd like to have that early access too, be sure to check out my Patreon. There are other benefits as well, right? And while the website says per YouTube video and you can support me every single time I upload a video, if you don't want to do that, that's fine, I'd still be very thankful for your support. You will have the option to limiting your patronage to just once a month. So if you choose the $3 membership, you won't be paying me $3 every single time I upload a video, although you can do that. You'll be paying me $3 every single month, and that's it. So yeah, be sure to check that out. You can also follow me on social media here, and especially on Instagram, where I share my more candid thoughts, right? mostly in the form of reels. So yeah, be sure to check that out as well. And if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Leave a like and let me know what your thoughts are about this entire video. Did you know about Goodful? I certainly did not before this video. And what do you think of them? What do you think of their video? I'll be in the comment section for a while after uploading this. So be sure to leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.